So one pattern I've noticed when photographers come to me for help in Lightroom is that so many of them are adding images to their catalog the wrong way. So they're setting themselves up from failure before they even start, and this just snowballs into much bigger problems down the line. Now, when it comes to programs like Lightroom, everything, it's interconnected. So you always want to get off on the right foot, otherwise it can affect much more than what you try to do in the moment. And one of the biggest mistakes that photographers make is that they are not putting their raw files in the right place when importing. And this causes so many problems down the line. With missing images, duplicates, it can slow Lightroom down considerably. There are many frustrating roadblocks that could have been easily prevented if those raw files were put in their proper place before import. So in the next few minutes, I'm going to show you some very small but important changes that you can make to your importing workflow that will save you a ton of time troubleshooting down the line and ensures that your raw files are properly backed up and secure. Okay, so before we get started, you should know that all the tips that I'm going to get into, I've actually laid them all out in a free PDF guide. I call it a Lightroom Workflow Cheat Sheet, and I'll put a link to that where you can go and download your copy, but basically it's a bird's eye view of my entire Lightroom workflow. The steps I go through when I come home with a card full of images. I go over importing, organizing, processing, and exporting. So if you're short on time or you just want that quick reference, make sure to download that while you're here. All right, so let's jump over to the desktop and let's get those raw files sorted properly before importing them. So what typically happens is that photographers will import images into their Lightroom catalog in either one of two ways, and both are wrong. Either one, they'll dump them all into their computer from the memory card and import them from their internal hard drive, their computer. Or they will import them directly from the memory card and use Lightroom to simultaneously copy those raw files to wherever they want to store them. And both of these methods can cause so many problems down the line, and this is why. There is a huge misconception about how the Lightroom catalog works under the hood. So when you import images into the catalog, actually let's switch over to this visual here. So I have this graphic set up where I have my camera, which contains the raw files that I just took. And then I have my computer, which has Lightroom open and is also connected to the Lightroom catalog file. It's the brain of Lightroom, which is stored on your computer. So let's say I have these images on my memory card and I want to add these to Lightroom. So let's copy these images from our memory card. Now let's shrink the size down a little bit. Okay, so I'm copying these images from the memory card. I want to put them into the Lightroom catalog. This is what many photographers think happens when they import their raw files, but it does not happen. Instead, what happens is that these images are not copied into the catalog file, but rather copied onto your computer hard drive, or more preferably, they're copied onto an external drive. And we'll get into that in a minute. But instead, they're actually copied from the memory card to your computer. And then Lightroom establishes a connection to those raw files on your computer. So Lightroom has now become aware of those images and is now linked to them. So those images here on the hard drive, they are plugged into the Lightroom catalog. Now, during import, Lightroom will create an additional smaller copy of all those raw files and store that in the catalog file. These are called previews, and they're actually exactly what they sound like. You are previewing the raw files. So what you're actually looking at here in Lightroom, these little thumbnails right here, those aren't your original raw files. Those are the preview copies that are stored in the Lightroom catalog, which are plugged into or connected to the actual original raw files on your computer. So your catalog file is a pass-through program. It's the go-between where changes you make to these previews here in Classic are pushed to the catalog file, and the catalog file will then copy those changes over to the original raw files. Well, not the actual raw files, but they are stored in a sidecar file next to the raw file so that they remain protected from any changes. And this works in the reverse. If you were to make changes to the original raw files outside of Lightroom, those changes can be imported into the Lightroom catalog, which will then update the preview files you are looking at inside of Lightroom. And this is a great system because it makes your workflow entirely non-destructive. You can always undo the changes you make. It protects those original raw files because those are your digital negatives. However, this concept can be really confusing if it's the first time you're hearing about it, and that's okay. This ecosystem here, it's not something you're used to, but trust me, this is a huge benefit. And actually, if you go and download that Lightroom cheat sheet that I mentioned earlier, inside of that is a link to a free lesson where I break down the entire Lightroom ecosystem. I explain exactly 
how the catalog file and previews work with your raw files. So if you can't wrap your brain around this right now, go and watch that video and it'll demystify everything. But I wanna keep this video short and keep the pace going, so I'm gonna move on from here. Okay, so the point of knowing that and how it relates to getting your raw files sorted before you import them is that once you add those images to the catalog and create that connection, Lightroom is now aware of those raw files and where they're located. And it becomes much more difficult to move or otherwise organize your raw files outside of Lightroom after the fact. You wanna get those raw files sorted before you establish that connection. For example, let's say you come home and you quickly add all of your images to your internal computer. You throw them on your desktop. This is what most photographers do because they want to import them and get started right away. So you import them to your catalog file and everything is fine. And then one day your computer starts slowing down. So you decide to free up some space and move all of those raw files onto an external drive. So you got your new external drive and you go ahead and take those raw files, move them off of your computer and store them onto that drive. And then you go back to Lightroom and find out that all those images are now missing in the catalog. Lightroom can't find it. And this is one of the reasons why photographers come to me for help because all of a sudden thousands of images have gone missing and they don't know why. Well, here's the reason. Since Lightroom is now connected to those raw files here on your computer, you cannot move those raw files to a new location without Lightroom knowing about it. So we take those images, put them on the external drive. Notice that the arrow here, Lightroom is still pointing to that location on your computer. So Lightroom is not going to know that those raw files have moved. You're going behind Lightroom's back, right? And a great analogy for this is to think of Lightroom like an actual library with catalog cards that tell you where books are located inside of that library. And actually that's what the catalog file is named after. The library system works the same way. So if you were to go to the library for a book and that book was moved to a different section and the catalog card wasn't updated to reflect that, guess what? That book is not going to be in the place you expect it to be in. So the catalog file works the same way. Lightroom needs to be made aware of this move. You need to point Lightroom in the right direction. So you need to tell Lightroom, okay, instead of looking here, you should be looking here to the external drive. And you can do this inside of the library module, but that process can be really labor intensive and open yourself up to a bunch of mistakes if it's not done correctly, especially if you have a lot of images. So a much better and more reliable way to do this is to put your raw files in their final location before you import them. So what I should have done is copied those raw files from a memory card to the external drive first, and then import them into the Lightroom catalog because by doing so, you're preventing so many problems before they happen. So instead of rushing through the process and just dumping all those raw files onto your computer, copy them from the memory card to the external drive, then point Lightroom to that image folder on your external drive. Now, some photographers are hesitant on doing this because they don't want to be tied to their external drive, especially if they work on a laptop. But since Lightroom is creating those preview copies, you don't have to be connected to those raw files once you import them. There's a certain type of preview file that you can create at import that will allow you to process without actually being connected to those raw files. And I explain all of this in much greater detail in that free Lightroom course. But the point I wanna make here is that you will avoid so many problems down the line if you put a little thought into how you want to organize your images externally before you import them. And not only will this help you avoid annoying problems like missing images and duplicates and a bunch of other issues that come up when you break that link between your source files, but there are so many secondary benefits of putting those raw files on an external drive. It's much more secure. It makes it easier to recover your images when the hard drive crashes. Not if, but when. Hard drives are not as secure as you think. And also Lightroom works much faster and will crash less when you free up that space on your internal hard drive. So this is one of the first things I recommend photographers set up when they start working with me because it prevents and solves so many problems. Now, this is just one way you can improve your Lightroom workflow. In that cheat sheet that I mentioned earlier, I've detailed every step of my processing workflow from importing to collections and keywords and library module to enhancing your light and color and detail and develop module. And finally, how I export for web display or to send up to the printer. Everything is outlined from a bird's eye view so you can see how the entire process works. So while you're here, just click the link and you can download your copy for free right now. And I actually just updated it and everyone said that it's extremely helpful. All right, I hope you found these tips useful. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next video.